Welcome to Sunday School this morning, boys and girls. I'm hoping that you've had a great week and you're looking forward to our story today. We are still in the book of Luke. Uh, so that's, remember, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So grab your Bibles. We're going to be in the book of Luke. So in this story, Jesus had been traveling around the land of Galilee. And he was going from town to town healing people and doing miracles and teaching about God in the synagogues. That's kind of like their churches that they went to on the Sabbath days. And all of the people were excited about all the things that Jesus was doing and saying, and they were all talking about them. He was the gossip that was going on. If there had been Facebook back then, he would have been all over Facebook. And one day, Jesus went back to his hometown. His hometown was called Nazareth. And all the people in Nazareth, of course, knew him. They saw him grow up. They knew his mom and dad. They knew his brothers and sisters. And so they heard about all this stuff that he had been doing, and they must have been wondering, this is just Joseph's son, right? This is just James's brother, and he's doing all these miracles? I'm wondering what he's going to do when he comes home. I'm sure they were very curious to find out what would happen. So when Jesus was in Nazareth, the Sabbath day came along, and that was the day that everyone went to the synagogue to worship God. And so Jesus went to the synagogue with all of the people in town, too. And he stood up and read from the scroll, because that's what they did. They didn't really have a preacher, uh, but they kind of had like sort of Sunday school teachers that would stand up and read a part of the Bible and talk about it. And they let Jesus be the Sunday school teacher that day. And he stood up and read a part of the scroll. Oops, I left my scroll. Oh, well. And you all know what a scroll looks like, right? It kind of unrolls. It's not like a book that we have, but it's all rolled up. And so he unrolled the scroll, and he read off what would be a part of the book of Isaiah. Remember, Isaiah is in our Old Testament. And so they had a scroll that contained the book of Isaiah. And Jesus read a part And I'm going to read you from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, that is quoting what Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And he has sent me to announce the year when he will set his people free. And that was a very exciting passage to read. That was a passage that talks about the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus read that, and then he started to talk about it, explaining what the passage meant. And everyone was probably sitting on the edge of their seats and listening to Jesus with wide open eyes. They wanted to hear what he had to say because he had become so famous with all of his miracles and teachings. And so he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. They probably looked around at each other. They're like, what, what, what did he say? What does that mean? Is he saying that he is the Messiah? But he's just Joseph's son. He grew up. We know him. We, he grew up right here. And so they were, getting, they were starting to get really confused. And they really were kind of still focused on the miracles. They really just wanted to see some miracles because they thought that would be exciting. But then Jesus said something that got them all upset. He said, now you'll be expecting me to do miracles like the ones that you've heard about. So he was kind of reading their minds. And this comes from Luke chapter 4, verse 24 and 27. He said, What I'm about to tell you is true. A prophet is not accepted in his hometown. I tell you for sure that there are many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, and there had been no rain for three and a half years. There wasn't enough food to eat anywhere in the land, but Elijah was not sent to any of those widows. Instead, he was sent to the widow in Zarephath in near Sidon. And there, was many, there were many in Israel who had skin diseases in the days of Elisha, the prophet, but not one of them was healed except Naaman the Syrian. So when Jesus started talking about some of these people who saw miracles who weren't even Jewish people, 
they got kind of upset. They wanted the Messiah to come to the Jews and only the Jews. They believed that that's what God has promised. But Jesus was telling them that they weren't really looking for the right things, that they needed to, that Jesus would do miracles so that people would believe in him, not just so that they could see a fancy show or something exciting. He wanted them to get to know him and believe in him. <clears throat> so Jesus told them that he had come to preach the good news to all people, not just the Jews. And they were kind of upset by that. So they, kind of, they actually got pretty mad. And they grabbed Jesus and they started marching him up to the top of a hill that was right outside their town. And they wanted to throw him off the hill. They were that mad. But Jesus did something pretty smooth, pretty slick. And it tells us in Luke chapter 4, verse 30. Jesus walked right through the crowd and went on his way. That's pretty amazing. They were ready to throw him off a hill. And Jesus, for Jesus, it was no trouble to just slip right through the crowd and to go on his way. His own neighbors that he had been hoping would believe in him did not. And this fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy, just like he had told them. So he had to go on his way and take the good news to other towns. He had lots of other places to tell people the good news that God had sent the Messiah. So sometimes in our lives, we're kind of like the people in Jesus' hometown, right? We want to see God do something spectacular, but we don't necessarily want to trust him to do it the way that we want him to do it, or we don't want to just believe in him and his way. We want to just see it for excitement and for entertainment. But that's why we need to keep reading and studying God's word, because the more we learn about Jesus, the more we know that he is worth following and believing in just because of who he is, not just because of the things that he can do for us. So we need to study God's word and learn more about Jesus so that we can be more like him and we can trust him. And I hope you think about that this week. And next week when you come back, we'll have another story.